Joe Sanders, and a front line of Matt Brady, Aaron Alexander, and Herman Fowler. A very formidable group indeed. Indians counter with likewise a formidable group. Boyd, Manifold, and Miller, along with Jones and Bush in the backcourt. We invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy TCI High School Basketball, the best in Central Indiana. Bill, I think what's key to that three spot for the Anderson Indians manifold is that he'd be able to play that three spot. And that uh, we've seen him a couple times uh, lately where Eric Bush gets in foul trouble. The manifold has to go to the two or the one spot, and that throws him out of sync a little bit. So, uh, and he has to match up with Herman Fowler, and that'll be a tough matchup, frankly. Fowler at 6'3, 218. Right. Manifold just 5'11 and 165. He plays bigger than 5'11, uh, but uh, Fowler is a. a so he'll have to reckon with Greg McAdams and Jerry Taylor are officials. They are ready. The players are ready. We hope you're ready. Glad you're with us for TCI High School Basketball. Miller and Gaines and the Indians have the opening tap. This is Eric Bush with a quick jumper from the outside. And he starts the Indians off with a three-point hoop. Well, I said they got to uh, dictate the tempo. That'll dictate it. Anderson in straight man-to-man -man right now, pressing over the floor. I will identify the Kokomo players dressed in their traveling blue with red numerals and white trim. Gaines with a little jumper on the inside puts it in. And so each team with a good start offensively hitting their first hoop. Yeah, kept his dribble and just kept working until he got in there where he could do it. Boyd misses the turnaround and the rebound yanked down by Matt Brady. We'll watch and see how some of Tom's keys develop as this game moves along. This is Sanders all the way around his man in traffic, and I think we're going to get Manifold call for the foul underneath the Kokomo basket. That's twice Kokomo's been able to, to uh, penetrate and dribble all the way to the corner of the basket, and uh, uh, that's a no-help defense there so far. I mean, someone from Anderson uh, needs to slide over and help pick that up. Kokomo, good job going to the basket. Michael Gaines inbounds it. Oh. Uh, air ball thrown up there by Fowler. Out ahead is Boyd. But he waits on traffic to clear as the Indians did not have a break. The Indians want to get down ahead of Kokomo's defense if they can. That's a crucial part of the tempo control that Tom talked about. We'll see how that plays out. Here's Manifold now inside his point, stolen away as the cat defense ever sticky collapsed on Boyd. Well, when they're in the zone, you put the ball on the floor in the middle, you're going to have two or three hands going after it. And that time, uh, one from behind got him. High lob down inside, lost off the fingertips of Joe Sanders. Anderson will play it. Kind of a backdoor play of sorts there that wasn't quite uh, crisply executed. Yeah, I think he saw it right at the last minute, and then uh, when he decided to make the pass, it was almost too late. Inside, there's Miller for Anderson. The way Miller gets free makes it a 5-2 to two Anderson lead with 6.20 remaining in this opening period. Good ball movement against the zone. One extra pass got him, got him a layup. Here's the high pass down to Alexander to clear the pressure. Now Sanders takes a three. Rebound is long to Sanders. Gaines will take the outside shot. He buries a three. Michael Gaines has all five of the Wildcat points, and we're tied by five with six minutes to play in this open period. Starting right out, kind of like we thought it would. Jones goes inside to Boyd for a turnaround. And Boyd will be called for an over-the-back foul. Second Indian foul, first on Aaron Boyd. Well, Tom, when you talk about Kokomo, you talk about a lot of people call it basil ball. Uh, I think Coach Heklinski refuses to concede that it's just solid, fundamentally sound yeah. basketball. And as I say that, they turned the ball over against the Anderson pressure. Pressure did that. They had to throw it to Brady on the inbounds pass, who was a center. And as he tries to get the ball back to one of the guards, just, uh, just made an errant pass. Speaking of turnovers. <laughs> Fumbled a pin, but we'll get another one. Here's Manifold, jumps one up there long. Rebounded by the Cats, Brady. I think he thought he was going to get called for traveling, and so went ahead and took the shot, and uh, they didn't call it. That little jump step move we see it. He does that quite often. Kokomo can take their first lead of the contest with a hoop on this possession. Here's Fowler missing outside, and Miller has the rebound for Anderson. Bush will quickly attack the Anderson basket. Jones drops it inside to Boyd. Spin move. Hoops one up and in. Aaron Boyd 
as his first two. Anderson leads 7-5. We've seen him improve around the basket offensively in the last month, Bill, just uh, where he's playing pretty confident. Here's a ball tipped in the air, but recovered by the Cats. Alexander, but stolen by Bush. He has Jones out ahead on the wing, but goes all the way through and draws a Wildcat foul on Joe Sanders. I, I'd say, say five weeks ago, Aaron Boyd, the night he missed his first two shots, he might not have taken another one, but he's confident enough now. He went in and last time down the floor and got that one to fall. First Locked substitution of the night. Checks into the contest, number 31, Joey Bennett, a fine 6'1", sophomore in the Kokomo lineup. A lot like Kokomo, uh, that, or like, uh, yeah, Kokomo Anderson that time, health defense, they put the ball on the floor, there was two or three guys grabbing for it, very push on the steal. Push in the act of shooting, and the 68% free throw shooter has his fourth point of the night. As we're three minutes into tonight's North Central Conference, headliner from the wigwam. And you saw the standings earlier as Basil Mobby looks on. Anderson leads it now 9-5. All four of the leading contenders playing each other tonight. Here's another Anderson takeaway. Bush wants a three. The rebound tapped away by Jones and kept in play. Now Manifold will take the baseline jumper. Miller tips it but recovered now and Taken out of harm's way by Aaron Alexander, and Bennett will bring it up for the Wildcats. Press causing a little more uh, problems for Kokomo than I thought it might, Bill. Got a couple of turnovers uh, the last two times against the uh, after a scored basket on the out -band. Wildcats on the short end of a 9-5 to five score. We get a holding call. That's the second on Manifold. He had his hand on Fowler's body when he started his drive, and you just can't... Uh, can't touch him that much. We're going to see a sub for him. I would imagine Jeremy Ramsey will be the youngster off the bench. Been playing very well for Anderson. Averages about eight a game off the bench. Last game with some instant offense out of Jeremy Ramsey. He got the Indians going. Uh, and he'll get the job guarding Bauer. Although he's taller, he's not near as uh, stout, they call it, as Herman Bauer. Ramsey at 6'6". And again, 165 down on the blocks. Fowler dishes off to Brady, who goes up strong. Took it to the glass. Matt Brady makes it a two-point game. Anderson by the 9-7. to seven. Boyd works inside, and a foul. Is it Brady in the paint? So that's a good look the last time down here by Fowler. He was double-teamed and knew someone had to be open. Good job. Brady cutting to the basket. That's when you're going to get that easy layup. Brady indeed. No, they're going to give it to Alexander. Aaron Alexander on the play. 34. Now they correct it. It is 44. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was it. Really bumped him over time. We're quite a ways away from official score, so we got to go with what's on the board. There's Jones missing outside. Follows his own miss and puts it in. First basket of the night for Jones. Anderson has four of their players in the scoring column. And here's a steal by Boyd. But they're going to say over and back. And that has Coach Heklinski extremely upset. Out on the floor. Two steps. There he is. Not pleased as uh, saying that what Tom that the momentum of the steal carried him into the backcourt. That well, should be legal in his opinion. Well, if you leave the ground in that side of the court, the forecourt, the forecourt, and you go up and catch the ball and land in the backcourt, they say that's a violation. Okay, that's a backcourt violation. That's the way it was judged in this case. So the men in the uh, stripes obviously have the final say. It is by four. Here's another ball batted free. Anderson's defense getting the hands on a number of passes and uh, given, as Tom said, the Cats some early trouble. They give a lot of people trouble. They're pretty quick. Sanders will trigger. Looking comes into Fowler. Inside, knock free. Blocked by Eric Bush. And it is back on the attack. Bush all the way through on the baseline. Scoops one up too strong. By the way, Farrell in the ball game and Eric Bush, able Bush to pick with a up foul. That, that ball off the floor and get it back up quick amongst all the big guys. That was quickness that did that. Bennett quickly ahead to Alexander. Now Fowler with a baseline jumper, kind of forced that one a bit, and Miller has it for Anderson. Not that it was a shot he couldn't make, but he wasn't squared up quite as well. Maybe. Here's Miller all the way in traffic. He walked. Third turnover for Anderson, five so far for Kokomo. 
3.03 left in the period. Anderson with their largest lead of six, 13 to seven. And we have a whistle, and Michael Gaines will re enter the Kokomo lineup. Fowler, I believe, will come out. Let's wait and see. No Fowler stays in. It's Bennett sitting back there. Corey Evans in the game for Aaron Boyd. The both teams making some substitutions. Here's pressure and Gaines. Indians drop off now. Michael Gaines will attack against Eric Bush. All the way around, scoops it up and in. Just went right around Bush, did Michael Gaines. He has seven. A lot like the first time uh, right at the start of the game, no one sliding over to help, so he just took it all the way basket. Take what the defense gives you. He did it that time. Jones from outside is long, and the ball is allowed to go out of bounds. Kokomo will play it. And again, you see at the lower left of your picture, the scoreboard here at the Wigwam and the score. We'll try to give you that shot from time to time. Quickly ahead is Alexander all the way down. Nearly lost the handle. Gives it to Farrell, who can't get it to go. And out of bounds to Kokomo. Wildcats will play it trailing by four, 13-9. Anderson uh, with nearly a new lineup as Miller will come out now. Marcus Terrell checks in, number 33. Joey Bennett in for Kokomo. Bennett right back in there as he's kind of slid in and out a couple of times now. Goes into Fowler. Ramsey has it. Nice pass in on the post to Farrell for a good turnaround. Two nice assists so far by Herman Fowler. He's playing a pretty good all-around game so far. Here's Jones. Goes inside, batted free. Who's got it? Evans recovers for Anderson, and now Bush will reload the Anderson offense. Farrell had an excellent ball game against Carmel in the win last Saturday night. Eight points and I think a like number of rebounds. Very solid off the bench for Coach Mobby's ball club. Bush walk, took the extra step. So the turnover bug bites Anderson a little bit more. Yeah, three fairly quick ones in the last minute and a half or so. The over and back, the travel there. The two number tens Bush and his counterpart going at it head to head. Each have seven points to lead their respective teams here in the early going. Ramsey can't get the steal. Fowler lets fly and drills a three. Herman Fowler's first hoop of the night, and Kokomo has their first lead at 14 13. Uh, Basil thinks he's their best three point shooter. He hit two big ones against Logan's for one at the end of the first uh, half and wanted to near the end of the game to seal that victory. Ramsey misses with a good shot fake, but uh, unable to convert. Here's a steal by Bush, puts it up and in. Eric Bush with a huge turnover against the Wildcats off the another press. Turnover. And another Wildcat turnover. A seven bit. Coach Malby a step or two out on the floor that time. with some encouragement for his ball club. There's Basil in the background as Bush comes out. Winkle checks in for Anderson. Eric's probably tired. This is the first, uh, first quarter. He, he hadn't uh, been sitting down with foul trouble in the last three games. Just kidding, Eric. For Anderson audience, it's been a, a month of January of top 20 or 25 matchups. Uh, Anderson Bloomington North, Anderson Madison Grant, Anderson Ben Davis, and tonight Anderson and Kokomo. Here's the ball taken away by the Wildcats. Farrell air, air mails it back to Gaines, who will be challenged now by Tyson Jones. One point Anderson lead all the way through Michael Gaines. And a rebound foul will go against Ryan Winkle, apparently, of the Indians. No, I got to get Ramsey. Is it Ramsey? Okay. The back on the uh, shot. We're pointing to the floor. He's not on the shot. Ramsey's first, number four on the Indians with 101 to play in the period. Comes in Alexander. Gaines finds the outlet. It's back to Gaines now. It's Sanders, Gaines, Farrell, Fowler, and Alexander in the cover. Here's Aaron Alexander, and we get a charging call as the ball was dished off, and Corey Evans took the charge for Anderson. And then he got jumped on because uh, Alexander <laughs> finished the shot, or someone did, and landed on him. Michael Gaines first foul, team foul number four, and another Kokomo turnover. 45 seconds, let's see if Anderson spreads the floor. 
Ramsey, now Winkle. 30 seconds to go. The Indians really pressured out high. Jones all the way inside to Evans, who goes up. Reverse layup is up and good by Corey Evans. Well, he's been doing a nice job of that. Uh, that's two or three times we've seen him do that this year. Probably get the shot blocked if it goes right up. 17-14 with 10 seconds to play. Once again, you see the time in your lower left corner of your screen. Gaines all the way through, penetrates and pushes one up there. Winkle with a rebound with two, with one, lets it fly off the glass and out of play as Anderson, after eight minutes, leads the Kokomo Wildcats 17 to 14. We'll be back with quarter number two after this timeout. Very exciting, entertaining with a lot of action, exactly what we thought it would be. Anderson led by as many as six, fell behind by one, and right now they lead it by three with a look at the first quarter. Team stats, here's Tom. Bill, a couple of my keys were they have to handle the pressure and the turnover ratio. They beat Kokomo. They, uh, they've got eight turnovers, so they didn't handle the pressure very well. The ratio against rebounds is six. The ratio against Anderson turnover is four, so they're not doing a very good job there either. All right, here's an offensive rebound by Brady. Outside shot by Fowler is long off the iron. Rebound kept alive. Winkle knocks it out of bounds. Kokomo will have it. Uh, Kokomo shot six out of 14. Anderson seven out of 17. Anderson shooting the only two free throws of the game. Eric Bush made them both. Rebounding pretty even. Seven for Anderson, six for Kokomo. And uh, as I already said, eight turnovers. Kokomo four for the Indians. All right. See if the Wildcats can improve on that stat here in the second quarter. Still very much in this ball game, though, as we knew they would be. Gaines works his way in the hoop. High off the glass. Rebound on the floor. Bush pushes it ahead. Has to come back for it, though. And thrown out of bounds off of Anderson. So Kokomo Boy. will get it. Heady play by the Wildcats guard, Joe Sanders. Sanders will trigger. And again, Gaines will handle the basketball an awful lot. Yeah. And that's what you want your experienced point guard to do. Right. <laughs> Ramsey down inside. Ale Alexander gets away from Boyd and has his first two. Well, Boyd kind of went for the steal, playing over the shoulder, and missed it, and that left him wide open. Boy, they've had some easy shots. Coach Catch Tom kind of signs up that zone. Is it 2 3 pretty much? Yeah, it's a 2 3. They, they, more and more teams play kind of a matchup zone. They know where someone is, and you're always guarding someone, no matter even if there's no one in your area. Brady rebounds the Bush miss and brings it up himself, and there's a trap in the backcourt, but Sanders eludes it with six and a half minutes to go in this first half. And Sanders picked up a pivot foot, said the official. The winner of this ball game certainly will be in the driver's seat in the conference, without question. And you say, well, how can you say that with Kokomo already having one loss in the conference? But they play, as do the Indians, uh, all of the people that they're contending in the conference with. So they really control their own destiny. Here's a ball taken right away. Gaines picks Winkle's pocket. The Indians are back on defense as Kokomo will try to take the lead. Trailing by just a single point. There's Fowler. Gaines now. Sanders works the baseline for a 10-footer. Sanders first two. All five Kokomo starters have scored. And six are in the scoring column for the game as Wildcats have their second lead of the night. I think both coaches know how important this game is in the conference. Uh, Nick Lenski drove all the way to Logansport to watch Coke the other night. I know they've both been scouted well by the other one. Coach Nick Lenski says Basil's probably seen all 15 of our games on tapes, too. Because <laughs> he really is a guy to scout thoroughly his opponents on video. Yeah, and as I said, I think this may be a game where, where coaching strategy has, uh, is more important than, than any other game we've seen for a while. Each team coming in at 13-2. Here's Sanders outside the arc. Rebounded by Ramsey as two players hit the deck, Brady and Boyd, but they're both okay. Here's Bush all the way around. Scoops one up and in on the run. Eric Bush in double figures with 11, and Anderson back on top, 19-18. Seesaw battle. 4.50 to play in the first half. 
again, Kokomo trying to reestablish their tempo. Quick turnaround by Fowler is good. At the bounce. 2019 as we seesaw the lead back and forth. Right now it's Kokomo's advantage. Three players waiting at the scores table to check in. For Anderson and one for Kokomo. <laughs> Miller has a shot blocked, but recovered by Boyd. Still loose. Out of bounds to the Indian. We'll check out the subs as you see the wholesale substitution underway now. Anderson gets Manifold, Evans, and Jones back into the contest. Eric Farrell returns to uh, spell Alexander in the Kokomo line. Bush will trigger it from beneath the Indian basket. Bush all the way through, up again, can't get this one to go, and Farrell is there with good position on the inside to bring down the defensive board. Kokomo with the lead and the basketball. Farrell, or rather Fowler, misses outside. Miller has the rebound. Bush all the way through in traffic. Outside jumper by Jones. And Manifold with the offensive rebound, got it. Manifold's first two of the night. Anderson leads 21-20. I think Miller or Evans or someone kind of cleared the lane there, and he, he went right in shot left. Got it up on the rim and saw it roll over the top just enough. 21-20. Fowler left alone, gets around Jones and scores easily. Defensive, Herman has seven. Defensive mix up there as no one was on Fowler. You got to know where he's at all the time. Good job by him going to the basket. Kokomo leads it 22-21. Jones steps in and gets the roll. Jones has his second basket. Anderson 23, Kokomo 22. Eight lead change, make it nine as Alexander with the hoop, or check on Sanders. Outside shot, answered. Manifold, they say that's a two. The teams continue to change. Here's a steal by Bush. Bush with 13. Kokomo will ask for and get a timeout as the turnover bug right now is really biting the Wildcats hard. Anderson taking advantage of some points off the turnover. This game is in a, in a kind of a flow in, in relation to points, Bill, where it, uh, you think it might favor Anderson because uh, right now they're 27-24 with two, over two and a half minutes to go, so you think it's going to be in the 30s, which will put the game in the 60s for the final, and uh, Kokomo usually scoring lower than that and holding their opponents lower than that, and so you think it might favor Anderson, but Kokomo, I think, scoring so many give me baskets underneath the basket because of some defensive lapses that they're staying right with them and sure. uh, they're not getting out of contact with the Indians so I, I, right now it would be too premature to say hey it's favoring one team or the other. All right. What can uh, Coach Mobby do Tom with the, the problem getting the ball into the front court obviously that's their biggest biggest difficulty right now is uh, getting the ball up the floor. Yeah, well, he's got to figure out a way to get it back in Gaines' hands after it comes in bounds. Uh, the other guys are struggling with that. Michael Gaines is not going to struggle with it. In fact, what I've seen so far is when Gaines gets it, they kind of come out of the pressure. Anderson backs off. Yeah, right? so uh, you got to figure out a way to get it into your ball handler's hands. And, uh, Sometimes you'll see teams use their bigger people to help bring it up against pressure. Right. Let's see if, if that maybe is. The biggest okay. problem is when they're double teaming different presses, an all-out trap, a different way to hit. Fowler on the dribble, Bush, five-second five second call, another Kokomo turnover. Two and a half minutes to go in the first half. Pretty quick five, but uh, nevertheless, Fowler was standing there dribbling, Bush was all over him. And, you know, usually those referees count out loud, so if you're a player, you're, if you hear a three and a four, you better do something. That's right. Neither team near the one and one as we've had uh, relatively few fouls called. The possession arrow favors Anderson right at the moment. Should we have a hell ball? Here's Manifold missing badly outside, and Farrell is there for the Wildcats. A three pointer could get the Cats even on this possession as we're down to the two minute mark of this first half. 27 24. Sanders all the way through, fouled by the Indians. Is it Manifold? 
No, it's Corey F. Corey, and, and, and I guess if you're Coach Aklinski, you're saying I'd rather see that than let him go wide open for a layup, but at least they're going to have to make him at the line. But uh, there's some defensive uh, mistakes being made out there on, on both ends of the court, but mostly on the Anderson Indians. All right. Yeah. First foul on Corey Evans, fifth team foul. And at the line is... Joe Sanders to shoot the first Wildcat free throw of the night. Sanders, a 54% free throw shooter, has five points tonight. And could tighten this rascal up to a one-point ball game. We, uh, one game we, we did at Coco Bill McCutcheon, there was only four free throws shot, two by each team. They made them both, and those were in the first half, so there's none in the second half. So. Very unusual. So, yeah, it's unusual, but it, I don't think it's uncommon because of the defense Coco plays that there's a low amount of free throw shot in their game. Sanders picks up both free throws. It's a 27, 26. Anderson, Anderson lead. Evans at the other end of the floor. Inside is a blocking call against the Wildcats. That's a good foul because uh, he got him before he shot. They're not in a one and one. They were beat on defense, so go ahead and foul him. Trying only, to draw uh, the charge, but didn't quite get there. The only bad news on the foul for Kokomo was Michael Gaines, and that was his second. With still almost two full minutes remaining here in the first half. Tom. A stat I heard earlier today that I thought was a remarkable one. And I'll have a chance to work in as we get another break in the action. Here's Jones all the way through. Now Bush can't get the shot as Sanders covered him up. Now Jones from the left corner. Tyson really struggling from the outside. It seems to me when they get a three and they're coming because of the Coconut defense, not not real often, they're kind of rushing a little bit. Bennett, an air ball three, and again, Anderson off to the races. Bush throws it into the Kokomo crowd. The stat I heard, Houston Rockets star center Hakeem Olajuwon had career highs in field goals made and field goals attempted. He was 24 out of 40 in the Houston ball game on Thursday night, 48 points, and never went to the line one time. Can you imagine? <laughs> I can't imagine. Well, as a player, I can't imagine ever getting that many shots because I wasn't allowed to shoot. And uh, to, to score that many and, and to play as physical as they do in the NBA and not get a free throw, that is amazing. Unbelievable. That's okay. a career for some guys. Kokomo with a chance to take the lead once again as the clock is down to the 120 mark for this, this second period. Both of those made attempts and or made field goals and attempts are more uh, more. Opportunity. Assist, yeah. <laughs> assist and regular they would have. <laughs> Jumper is not there. Rebounded by Brady. Puts it up and in. Kokomo leads. Matt Brady has his second hoop of the night. 28-27. You can throw Hot Rod Hicks uh, assist in there, too. <laughs> he didn't have any more. Uh, Tom is speaking of Madison Heights star and Elwood stars of the past. <laughs> Legends, at least in their own mind. Well, and you know, for Kokomo fans, maybe Jimmy Rail. He probably never had too many assists. Jimmy Rail, there you go. Here's a turnaround by Boyd. He got oh! it, and Anderson leads again. Aaron Boyd, second hoop, 29 28. Seesaw ball game, half a minute to play. Let's see if the Wildcats opt to hold it for the final opportunity. Quick game. Moving right along, indeed. Clock, as you see, clicks down to the 22nd mark. Floor is spread, so Kokomo wants yeah. the final effort. Manifold's got to be careful. He's got those two fouls. He was bumping foul pretty good there. Now at 10 seconds to go. And the paint is gains for a little runner. Just penetrated easily. He has nine. Anderson with three. With two, Jones lets fly. No good at the gun. So Kokomo takes the lead into the locker room in a dynamite first half. The Wildcats 30 and the Indians 29. We'll be back with... First of the county and more after this timeout. Points to this 12 for the Anderson Indians led by three at the first stop. One of the features in our Madison County area that uh, we do each week is the first of the county segment. At least they've all set for the most part. Yeah, Anderson's patience against this zone seems like when they get a three-point shot, they should be too quick, and uh, they've had some turnovers down inside, but... They're just not going in the basket tonight, and that, that can make you look like you're not playing as good as you are. Quickly ahead is Alexander, all the way across his gains. Nice shot fake, or rather Fowler, up and can't get it to go. Brady keeps it alive, out of bounds to the Wildcats. 
Coach Heklinski talked early tonight, Tom, with me about not so much the number of possessions, but the number of shots taken in the game. So the Indians aren't afraid to pull the trigger with that kind of a philosophy. Here's Fowler inside, can't get it to go. Ball loose on the floor, and again, Alexander comes up with it. So Kokomo with a number of opportunities on this, their first possession. Yeah, they're hitting the boards good. Here's Brady with a turnaround. Matt Brady has a half a dozen. Kokomo has their largest lead of three at 32-29. Side Miller sends it way out high now to Bush. Anderson trailing by three. Bush with a jumper up and good. Just a two, they say. 32-31. Wildcats by four. Gets that ball, they kind of back off, Bill. Yep. Ten against ten. And they are both excellent players. Bush and Gaines. There's the ball as Anderson checked off the defensive board well that time. Saw the rebound hit the floor. Bush from three. Miller fights for the rebound. Takes it back outside. Now Manifold. The Indians could take the lead with a hoop. Here's Jones. Dishes down low to Miller who goes up strong and a foul. Good pass. Count the basket and put Dwayne Miller on the line on the Brady foul. They say don't leave your feet unless you know what you're going to do with the ball. Tyson Jones knew he was going to shoot, but at the last second saw an open Dwayne Miller cutting for the basket, and they got to lay him in a chance for a three-point play, and that's just a good play for Tyson Jones from Anderson. Second foul on Matt Brady, first team foul in the second half. There are no players in the contest with more than two personal fouls, so obviously a low number of fouls. Miller misses the free throw, and Fowler has it for Kokomo. As Anderson leads it with our 13th lead change of the night, 33-32. Something tells me it's going to be that way the rest of the contest. I don't think anyone's going to get way ahead. And a baseline move and a baseline foul on Manifold, and he will come right back out of there yeah, with his third foul. He's getting those little bump fouls that, that don't amount to much. And Brett uh, offering a little bit of a argument to the official about the position he thought he had, but yeah, loses the argument. Did you see what he really did? Here's what he did. He acted it out. And a violation. They're going to call a pushing foul against Kokomo on Aaron Alexander. And I can tell you, Brett, from, from spending 40 years complaining about refereeing, they never change their call. It will not work, yeah. will it? <laughs> So the turnover gives it back to Anderson with the lead and the basketball, 6.05 to play in the third period. Brett thinks he's got a bat. I played some games Pinky Graham referee. <laughs> Jones follows his oh, own wow. miss and gets it to go. Tyson with a half dozen. Great play. For you Kokomo fans, that's a, a local ex-official that uh, <laughs> works the scoreboard here at the White Wall. The best news is it's ex. <laughs> Here is Sanders, has his pocket pick, but what do we got? A foul call on Anderson. And I think Coach Eklinski will ask for a timeout. Let's see. Or will it? Coach Eklinski will argue the call. Well, that was, that was on Kokomo? Oh, no, he no. called it on, okay. on Anderson. On Anderson. Anderson thought it was on Kokomo because they thought they'd made a good play. Foul was whistled against Eric Bush, his first, and the team's second. Each team with two team fouls here in the second.